Hey, how's it going? And Nvidia's GTX 680 was the world's fastest gaming solution for back in 2012, and for pretty good reason. Uh, the Kepler architecture marked Nvidia's transition to 28 nanometers and featured over 1500 CUDA cores, uh, which is over three times what was found in the previous GTX 580, all while consuming less power. Uh, this is this particular model is a Galaxy model and is considered one of the more higher end uh, cards. It has a 150 megahertz overclock out of the box as well as featuring four gigabytes of VRAM versus the two gigabytes found in most, uh, most, most reference models. And today I'm gonna to be taking a look and see if this thing can still hold up in some modern games. Some of the games are going to be a bit older to show what kind of performance you can expect to see if you're one of the lucky few to buy this thing brand new back in 2012, along with some more newer and modern titles to see if it can still keep up. So without further ado, let's dive right in. First off the bat is a performance benchmark, and in user benchmark we see that it only scores a 40%. Uh, not too bad considering its age, but below average for today's standards. First game we have here is CSGO. This game was released back in 2012 and is still pretty active in receiving a ton of updates. Uh, with an average of 160 FPS at 1080p high settings, this car can easily handle this game, even with a uh, high refresh rate monitor. Moving on, we have a cult classic from the era, Bioshock Infinite. Uh, with an average of 118 fps it would have been such a treat to play this game on this card back in the day compared to the struggling 30 fps you saw uh, if you're like me playing it on an xbox 360. next title we have here is league of legends uh, another game that is, is constantly evolving and was from uh, the time when the gtx 680 was released and it does really well averaging over 130 fps and providing a really smooth experience now, getting into some more modern titles, we have here Fortnite. Using the Unreal Engine, that usually favors NVIDIA chips, uh, we, see, we see that it can average a smooth 70 FPS, a pretty playable experience, uh, which, is, which makes it another win for the GTX 680. Uh, unfortunately, our next title here doesn't fare so well. Uh, in Apex Legends, we only see 50, an average of 50 FPS with very noticeable stuttering. Not a, not a very playable experience, unfortunately, and a shame as it does show the age of this card. Uh, and finally, we have the newest Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, uh, averaging just 59 FPS. And technically, it is close to that 60 FPS, uh, you know, average that you want to look out for. But on the lowest settings uh, and with some moderate uh, frame drops here and there, this really was not a playable experience, and uh, especially not one for a fast-paced competitive multiplayer game. All right, so there you guys have it. Uh, I was pretty shocked to see some of the performance this car can still produce. Uh, I think some of that had to deal with the fact that this was a four gigabyte model. I was pretty lucky to get my hands on that. You know, overall, I picked this card up for 40 bucks. Uh, the seller had it in really good condition, had the box and everything. So decided to pick it up and see how well this thing can perform. Um, and yeah, I was pretty surprised at the performance that this thing can achieve, uh, especially considering its age. Uh, what I recommend in today's, you know, 2012 times, uh, not really. Um, you know, a GTX 1050 can produce the same results uh, using a lot less power. And honestly, with some of the optimization issues in the newer games, it's just not worth it. But anyway, <laughs> that's going to do it for me today. Uh, hopefully, you liked the, hopefully you liked the video and consider subscribing if you want to see some more. Anyway, thanks if you made it this far and hopefully you have a good one. Take care now. Bye.